before we proceed to the reactions of alkenes and alkynes, sometimes um, you are given questions like for in your seat works or quizzes wherein they give a certain molecular formula and then they try to ask you uh, what's the possible structure of this so if we're talking about hydrocarbons it is possible for us to know that all right but how we use a certain uh, value and uh, we call this the IHD or the index of hydrogen hydrogen deficiency as the name implies we we are calculating how much hydrogens are there in a certain compound and uh, more specifically how much more hydrogens should a compound have in order for it to be fully saturated for example let's compare uh, ethane to ethene the first thing you have to do is what's present in ethane that's not present here in, eth in, in ethene that's not present in ethane of course there is the presence of a pi bond but what's the difference or what does ethane have more than ethene of course we know that there is a presence of more hydrogens here as compared to ethene All right. how much more we have four hydrogens here we have six here so meaning uh, we could actually have an inference from this this means that in exchange for two hydrogens we were able to come up with one pi bond it's that simple now let's try to have another example let's draw a cyclo uh, let's draw propane first So this is the structure of propane. So its its uh, formula is molecular formula is C three H. Let's count one two three four five six seven eight eight. So from this we we could actually recall the formula for a linear alkane and that is CN H two N plus two, wherein the N is the number of carbon atoms. And so, uh, for example, in, th in, in propane, N is 3, and 8 is the result of 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2, that is 8. How about in cyclopropane? The number of hydrogens is quite different. If you count them, we would have 6 only. So what does that mean? In exchange for two hydrogens you're able to come up with one ring and to go even further for example I um, I, I, I'll draw first uh, structure all right one two three four five six seven let's uh, have the formula for heptane so if we have n a seven the H should be 2 times 7 which is 14 plus 2 this is the formula for uh, this is the formula for heptane how much hydrogens do we have here in uh, this bicyclic system but this one let's count we have also 7 carbons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 let's try counting 2 3 4 5 6 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The central carbon cannot have any more hydrogens. So we have here C7H12. Look, we have uh, a difference of 4 because, again, since we have this principle, one ring means two hydrogens. Since we have two rings here, we have spent four hydrogens for those two rings. Alright? So meaning that we we could have this guideline that for every pi bond or for every ring we spend two hydrogens. And so let's try to use this that principle in a certain example. Alright. I'll use the one in the handout. C6H6. 
alright again first thing you have to do is well you are already given the molecular formula this is the given and uh, again since we are calculating the formula for the linear alkane linear alkane we have to do that also so here the n will be 6 so if we calculate that with the formula CnH2n plus 2 we substitute n with 6 C6H2 times 6 plus 2 we will yield the molecular formula C6H14 alright so we are now given the linear alkane formula the next step would be linear alkane hydrogens minus the givens hydrogen and that would actually give us the number of hydrogens lost alright and uh, this is the index of hydrogen deficiency alright so let's try to get the difference linear is 14 right and the given is 6 we get the difference and the answer we get is 14 minus 6 is 8 so meaning if we have 8 then what does that imply using this guideline it, it, it could mean a lot of things first of all since you have 8 you could possibly use all of that 8 uh, hydrogens to have how many pi bonds 2 is to 1 so 8 is to 4 pi bonds or in another manner you could possibly have 4 rings right or you could have a mixture of these like we could have 3 pi bonds and 1 ring 2 pi bonds and 2 rings 1 pi bond and 3 rings so these are your options so for example we could uh, try for example this one uh, 4 pi bonds one, let, let's try to draw something like that one to probably let's, let's accumulate all of that so here let's complete the number of hydrogens two then H and H two. let's try one two three four five six so this is a possible structure for C6H6 and again we have here one two three four pi bonds uh, I think it would not be possible to have four rings all right how about a ring and three double uh, three pi bonds actually that is very possible for example like that and uh, three pi bonds one two three it's possible but actually the most common C6H6 that we know which is cyclic is this one and we know that this is benzene all right so here we have three pi bonds and one ring we should be able to come up with C6H6 so how many hydrogens are there one two three four five six so this is another possible uh, structure and uh, these are two structures so you have a lot of options so in an exam the professor or the test or the question should be able to give you some clues to check if it only has a maximum of two pi bonds or it can only have a triple bond upon a reaction or it is only comprised of one ring two rings something like that so it would really depend on the given uh, the given molecular formula and uh, certain cases or products after some reactions